Hello and welcome to my talk for Chess 2021. My name is Ming Xing Chen. This talk is about a paper classic MacList on the Uncorded M4. This is a joint work with my colleague Zhou Tong. The first page is the introduction of the classic MacList system. Classic MacList is a key encapsulation mechanism. It is used for establishing a shared key for communication. Uh, it's based on a core basis public key encryption scheme. And it is a finalist in NIST's post-quantum cryptography standardization process. Uh, it has a three core operation. The key generation uh, is used for generating a public key and security key pair. The encapsulation it, uh, it first generates a random message and then encrypt the message. And the decapsulation can decrypt a uh, received ciphertext and then uh, derive a shared key. Uh, so uh, I leave all parameters for a different security level in the table. And you can post the video if you want to read the detail. Uh, a common criticism for a uh, classic MacLis is uh, its big public key. And this is this problem is more severe in an embedded system because it usually don't have so many uh, storage spaces. Uh, we use the Uncortex M4 as our optimization target. Uh, this is because the needs to uh, choose the process as its uh, first platform for embedded system. So uh, the M4 process has a 14 32 bits register. Uh, if the process has a 14 point unit, uh, this is uh, an optional. Then we have a 32 extra 14 point registers. Uh, we use the 14 point register as a, an extra stack spaces. So it can help us to prevent the register spilling. Uh, memory access usually costs uh, two clock cycles. Reading or writing contiguous memory can become fast. Uh, for example, it takes uh, n plus one cycles for reading or writing uh, n contiguous data. Uh, our device for programming is the ST uh, Discovery Board from the ST Microelectronic Companies. Uh, this is a commonly used board for uh, benchmarking the crypto systems. And this board has a 192 gigabyte RAM. Uh, more importantly, it has a one megabyte flash memory. Uh, the fresh memory is usually used for uh, storing the programs, but in our work, we use the fresh memory to store the public key. Uh, so uh, this uh, more or less uh, solves the problem of uh, large public keys. Our first optimization is the key generation. Basically, you have a large rectangle matrix H and you want to turn the first part, uh, the M part, into an identity matrix. And then you multiply the rest part, uh, the T part, by the N inverse matrix. And the product is the public key. So uh, there were two implementation before. The big picture of the two implementation is the same. They all First, use an in-place LUP decomposition to decompose the M matrix. Uh, the decomposition must be in place uh, because we usually don't have a large space in an embedded system. Then with the decomposed matrix of M, they generate the only a part of a public key. Uh, because the public key is larger than the memory, so they can only generate a step by step. So uh, there are two 
differences uh, in the two implementation. Uh, first, the result of the LUP composition are different uh, because they use a different, a different algorithm for the decomposition. Uh, second, after, after the decomposition, uh, the RKK implementation compute the an inverse matrix and generate the public key by the an inverse matrix. Uh, in those implementation, he did not generate the inverse matrix. He generated that he generates the public key directly by the decomposition data. So uh, this page shows our implementation. Uh, we kind of uh, mix up the two previous implementation. Uh, for LUP decomposition, we use the algorithm from the RKK's implementation. Then after the decomposition, we generate the public key directly from the decomposed data, uh, just as source implementation. So there are two kinds of metrics after, after the decomposition. Uh, for the permutation matrix P, we use a sorting network to permute the low the lows of a uh, matrix Ti. After the permutation is done, uh, we have to uh, multiply Ti by the inverse of the upper triangle matrix U or the lower triangle matrix L. Uh, the figure in the middle show the multiplication of the inverse matrix L or U, L or U can be done by the correct order of the low operation. So we don't have to compute the inverse matrices of L or U explicitly. Uh, in our implementation, we use the blocking matrix multiplication for all the matrix multiplication for better performance. Uh, then we proceed to the second operation of classic MACLIS, the key encapsulation. And this page shows the details of the encapsulation operation. It first generates a uniform random message with a fixed weight T. Then it performs a matrix vector multiplication. Uh, this is the most time consuming operation in the encapsulation. Uh, it multiplies the public key matrix by the random, gener random message generated in the previous step. Uh, we will talk about the two steps in the later slides. So, after the random message is generated and the matrix vector multiplication is done, we can then produce the cipher text and the shared key with the hash functions. When generating the random message, the spec requires it to be a uniform random vector with the length n and weight t. Uh, because we don't have a PRNG that can uh, generate the message directly. So the typical method for the generation is to generate indexes of ones and reject the index with the same value over its uh, length. Then we still have to check the repetition of the indexes. So we check the repetition by sorting the indexes and check if there are two adjacent elements with the same index, index. So we claim the sorting here need not to be a constant sorting algorithm. Uh, because when a non-constant time sorting algorithm is used, uh, for example, we use a Q-sort, then the sorting algorithm may leak the information for the order of two indices when compar uh, comparison, it will not dig the, its real value. So we use a faster algorithm for checking the rep repetitions. And this method can also be useful for other code basis crypt crypto systems, for example, the bike or HQC. And then is the 
matrix vector multiplication. Here we want to reduce the number of reloading the vector E during the multiplication. Uh, the reloading occurs because the public key matrix is a raw major matrix. So the multiplication is performed as an inner product for every row and the vector E. Uh, in other words, we have to load the vector into the register whenever the whenever one row is processed. So our strategy for reducing the memory access is to uh, process many rows of the matrix together. Uh, but we still want to write as many elements in one row as possible uh, because the contiguous rating is faster. So we end up we end up coming coming out to process the public matrix in a manner of a block submatrix. Uh, we divide the public matrix into four by ninety six block. So in each block the vector E is used only once. Then we talk about the last Hayen operation, uh, decapitalization. Uh, besides deriving a shared key, the main computation in decapitalization is to decode the error vector from a received cipher text. The decoding algorithm takes two inputs. One is the received cipher text, and the other is the secret GoPa code from the secret key. Uh, in the table below, we list the four most important components in decapitalization and their optimization methods. Uh, we optimize the base dice multiplication in the FFT component, and we use a new radix system method to implement the finite field multiplication in the very chemistry algorithm. And last, we optimize the Banish network by combining the computation of many layers together. Because the previous implementation used the bit slice multiplication, so we optimize the bit slice multiplication for the uncoded M4 here. The tricky part here is that we only have 14 registers, but we need to multiply polynomial of 12 turns. So one solution is that uh, storing the intermediate terms in the 14-point register when the register spilling occurs. But uh, moving data between normal register and 14-point registers are still cost a lot. So we have to find a way of uh, scanning input operand such that we not so many register spill occur. So we end up scamming the input operand like the figure here. In each block of the figure, we have eight tons of input. Four tons of them are coming from the polynomial A and the other four tons from polynomial B. When moving to the next block, we only need four new operands, either from polynomial A or from polynomial B. And some intermediate result here can be shared between the two adjacent blocks. The other point of the figure is that we compute the turns from high degree to low degree. And this way, when we compute the low degree blocks, we can reduce the computed high degree turns. So we don't need an extra phase for reduce the computed high degree turns to low degree. And here comes the breaking machine algorithm. We list the algorithm on this page. It looks complicated, but the actual computation only occurs in line six and in the product. And line eight, a vector multiplies a scalar. There is one difference from the previous implementation from the NIST submission. In the submission, they used a inverse free algorithm, but we compute the inverse of data in line A. Uh, we think the inverse can be computed faster, at least faster than the vector times 
vector scalar multiplication here. Here we show a new implementation for the finite field multiplication. Well, we call this a radix system multiplication. Here we have a polynomial of degree 7, A, and we can store the polynomial as a 32 bit integer. The constant term is stored at bit 0, and then the bit 4, bit A, and so on. So if we store the polynomial in this way, then an integer multiplication can perform the bit polynomial multiplication as the equation shown on this page. Uh, because the maximum value terms will appear at degree A, and its value is A when all coefficients are one. So uh, we can see here that A is this thing, 16. So the multiplication won't overflow the radix system format. And we implement the finite field multiplication with the integer multiplication here. Uh, if we store a data in radix system form. And we show our result of bracket machine algorithm with uh, various settings in these tables. This is because we didn't know which combination will be faster. So we try every setting to find out the fastest implementation. On the left table, you can see that uh, the bit slice multiplication is actually faster than the radix system multiplication. But on the right hand side, we have the opposite result. The break and machine with red existing multiplication is faster than the one with the bit slice multiplication. And the other result is that break and machine with the inversion is indeed faster than the inversion free version. So we analyze the reason why red existing break and machine is faster. Uh, when computing the inner product, the radix system multiplication uses a lazy reduction, which means it accumulated the product of, of bit polynomial multiplications and reduced only once when all the polynomial multiplication are done. The bit slice multiplication, on the other hand, cannot do the lazy reduction because the bit slice data is larger than the size of origins. When computing the vector time scalar, the radius thing can do the multiplication with exact length of polynomials. But the vector length in the base size data can only be uh, 32, 64, and so on. So the base size multiplication waste is a uh, computing power for multiplying unnecessary returns. When raise the degree of polynomial, a uh, radius system can do this by uh, changing its pointer to the headers of polynomials. But the bit slice data has to do the real logic shift across ranges. So we think this is the reason why radius system break mercy is faster than the bit slice implementation. Our last optimization for decapsulation is about the Banish network. Uh, this technique is actually quite common in this kind of multi-layer structure. Uh, for example, the FFT algorithm also has the multi-layer structure. Uh, when computing the Banish network, we can combine the computation for many layers to save the memory assets. Uh, for example, in the figure on the slides, we can combine the computation in the middle three layers. Uh, instead of loading and writing back all the data for every layer. Finally, we show our performance result as a conclusion. Uh, the number here in the table includes the reading and writing of the fresh memory because we store the public key in the fresh memory. Although there are still some numbers that we cannot show here because of the public key is larger than the fresh memory. We think all the optimization techniques can also apply to the situation that the public key is streaming through the network. So uh, there are actually some both 
with a uh, enough storage space for the classical mechanics available on the market. So uh, comparing to the latest best KN scheme, our encapsulation is about the same speed to the fastest finalist. But our decapsulation is about four to seven times slower. And that's it for all my talk. Thank you for your listen.